Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim. Today I want to talk to you a little bit more about the linear slide pack. We've uh, covered that a little bit before in a previous video, but there's been some questions and so we want to go back and maybe cover things a little bit more, maybe give you a little bit more in-depth uh, use case scenario and maybe some troubleshooting tips on how to actually use the linear slide effectively. So again, we, we all know, go back and refresh that you get basically two components that come with that. You have the rack portion and then you have a specially pinion gear that make up that pack. And everybody kind of remembers how they, they actually go together that you mount generally the, the rack on top of the channel and then um, the slide bearings go inside the other piece of a channel and it goes on top and then they interact with the bearing in between or the pinion gear in this channel here. So that's the basic ways. But what are some of the, the problems that you might run into with um, using that? And one of the first ones that people talk about is the fact that their, their rack doesn't smoothly go back and forth. And so I want to talk about a couple of reasons that why that might be. And the first one is um, the length of the screws in the rack portion itself. And I got as an extreme example here, I've actually put in a, a screw that's way too long, but I've got it pushed up and you can see threaded through the, the teeth in the rack. And the reason I've done that is because sometimes if you're not careful with the, the, the screw that you're attaching the rack to the channel, if you don't use the right one, well, if that gets up too high, and I'm going to roll this across, you can see that when it gets to those uh, high points where the screws are, it actually is going to create a bump. And that could actually cause some of the, the um, jarring motion as you try and use the rack and pinion. So remember that you want to make sure that the screws are not threaded up into the teeth of the rack. That's the first thing to look for. The second thing is, and it's kind of basically the, the same thing in reverse, there is a set screw that is in this pinion gear. And if you don't have that set screw down tight enough and it's backed out into the teeth of the pinion gear, kind of raised up, you have the same thing happening in reverse, only this time the bump is on the pinion gear. So as I roll that through, as that gets to where that set screw is not down far enough, it can cause a rough spot or a bump. And then the last thing that can happen if you don't have your racks aligned correctly, when you get to the joints and you, you run across the joints, it can cause a rough spot in the action of the slide. So you want to remember that you want to make sure your racks are aligned properly. One's not raised above the other, that they're smooth and down flush on the piece of channel or wherever you've got them mounted. So that kind of covers some of the things people have talked about as far as the, the bumpiness or a rack not smoothly uh, performing. The other thing that can impact that is the proper support. Now, when we normally use a rack, um, some people only do the one. And you can see that when I have a piece of channel on top of this single rack, um, there can be because you have to have a certain amount of uh, tolerance between the two for it to smoothly move back and forth a little bit of play this way. So one of the things that you can do is support it in two different planes. And as you can see, I'm showing you this here, I've got uh, actually the rack on two different sides of the same piece of channel. And what I can do is I can create a secondary carriage that I would put the slide bearings in. And then you can see as I would put that application onto my channel, I've got my bearings on two different planes on the rack. And as I move forward, that's going to stabilize that and make sure that I've got a very secure carriage structure um, as I uh, move up and down the, the slide of the rack. Uh, an, an example or another example of that is in uh, connecting on two sides would be if I would put my bearings, slide bearings on opposite sides and I could actually then support it in two different planes or two different dimensions and then I've got a very smooth action up and down supported on both sides. So that's something to, to think about. And you could also do that in the opposite direction. I could actually face these in this direction, create a carriage that had my bearings and supported it on the outside 
that would be another way to do that. And this particular robot is an example of that. As you can see, I've got a slide system, but I've got two racks facing this way, and I've got a third rack on this side. So as my slides are moving up and down on this rack, I also have one that balances and supports on this side, and it gives me a very smooth, supported carriage up and down. So that's one of the things that you might think about when you're using a slide is to make it a little more, more stable. How can I support it on more than one plane to give me that stability and a smoother bearing action? The last thing that we want to talk about too is gearing. Now, it's just like anything else that when you um, have a uh, the pinion gear that is supported through uh, the channel here on the outside. Let me put this through here real quick. Put my axle through. And again, just like that. I've got a basically uh, an input shaft here and if I put, uh, just like anything else, uh, indirect drive where I put a gear on this side, I can actually mount a motor with another gear that interacts with that. And as I place that on top of my rack, because this can be a slow operation, depending on how I gear that, I either can get more power if I gear down, or if I gear up, I can get a faster action there. So again, remember that I've got my output shaft on this, this piece of channel. It's the standard Tetrix gearing then from there on, and it's very easy to inter interact the, the gears. Again, I wanna make sure that everybody remembers there is an inspiration card in the package that kind of shows a couple of those different operations that you might want to use. So um, again, those are some things that give you a little bit more in-depth uh, information on the linear slide. Hope you found that beneficial information. I hope maybe that inspires you to put some of those type of uh, mechanisms on your particular robot. So remember, have fun, build some robots, and come back and see us.